Hello and welcome to another episode of eBay Scavengers. This is episode number 122 on ebayscavengers.com. It's a blog. Yeah. And this is uh, our first podcast on the road. We're in Austin, Texas. Lovely Austin, Texas. And we'll be on the road for the next three weeks. So for the next three weeks, we'll continue to record these podcasts. In uh, different places. Yep. In a hotel room. (laughs) Or wherever. You know, obviously, since we're on the road, we have not been a listing. We actually have not listed a single item this week. Right. We were very busy taking care of things before we left. However, as evidence of our strategy uh, is working for us, we still this week have sold about 31 items yep. because the day isn't quite over yet. And we've made about $1,800 gross. So the cool thing about that is we've sold less items, but we've grossed a very similar amount to past weeks where we've sold more items. And that's just because our other strategy of starting to try and list higher priced items seems to be paying off. You know, we've been selling more $100 items and more. Although like in the uh, comments on the blog we've been having lately uh, over at ebayscavengers.com, I would love to only sell $100 items. Yeah. But... You know, when the way we scavenge, if you're scavenging and only wanting to pay between one and five dollars for things, I mean, yeah, those kind of items aren't out there as easily. So we do find them, but like you say, not as frequently as something that sells for thirty to fifty. The bread and butter is always paying a dollar or two for an item and selling it for thirty, 30 to forty dollars. Forty to fifty, yeah, exactly. That's that's the majority of what we sell. Yeah. And can sell successfully. It's so. not flashy, it's not <laughs> glamorous, it's just, you know, a good value for everybody, you know. But we do like to tell you about the fun big sales we have, because yeah. that's fun. <laughs> Everyone likes that, right? It's kind of like the big show off, right? And that is so like is this week and it's a fun item for me. We had talked about going to a Brooklyn auction uh, is last year, yeah. and uh, you know a really kind of kooky, crazy auction with a lot of characters. A lot it was of, so fun. It was fun, and uh, I bought a zombie girl painting for ten dollars. Now, when we say zombie girl painting, you know now because there's all this zombie shows and movies and whatever, it looks like that. But someone drew it, and it's just a funky kind of outsider art style. I would say back in the late 60s, early 70s. And it even has like a, a rip in it, like someone kicked it or something. You know? Yeah. Uh, but it's so cool, and it's just one of those examples of you kind of got to go with your gut, and I just really fell in love into a thing. I probably even overpaid for it at the auction. I but think we paid $12 for it, which, yeah. I mean, you can laugh at that, but that's high for us. And we sold it for 150 150 We sold it for 150 I had it up for 300 because I was like, this thing's so awesome. Yeah. I, I love it so much, and I want a good um, price for it. And the lady, her first offer, I think, was like 50 or $60 for it. <laughs> and you had had actually a funny conversation with her because in her offer she was like this thing's ripped it's an unknown artist i'm not paying more than 50 i don't, it, I don't think she had that tone of voice <laughs> that was the tone i read <laughs> when i read it she didn't have that tone of voice she was just telling me well i'll give you 50 dollars because it's unsigned it's just you know a random unknown, piece of art yeah but i answered her with a counter offer and just said this is an original piece of art you'll never find anything, anything like, uh, like this and people pay over $50 for a cheap print at Ikea. So, you know, it's worth more because no one will ever have something like this on their wall. And she must have agreed because she bought it. and was She bought it for our counter offer. We counter offered at 150 Yeah. And she said yes. Well, and the other thing too was you said, you know, I'm going to be patient and wait for someone who really appreciates yep. this. Yeah. Because that's, that's the truth. I was willing to hold on to it. And, you know, and that's the other strategy we always talk about is, I mean, how do you price something like this? It's just yeah. like a weird piece of art. Like it's unsigned. I mean, where do you start? Well, we just went with our gut. We put yeah. $300 on it, but we put make offer. So again, that allowed us to have a conversation with right. this buyer and we were able to 
convince her that it was a good deal. And she so. agreed. So that was that was a fun sale. So if you go to her blog, we'll put a picture of it and yeah. you, you can see if, uh, you, if would, you think it's cool or not. I, I would, did. I would have put this on our wall, but I guess that's one reason why we don't have a lot of stuff on our house is because we like to sell anything. So we're, yeah. we're, we're happy to uh, get it out of the house. Last week, we had talked about how we sold some bird's nest. No, it was the week before. And um, uh, several people kind of mentioned like, that's weird that you sold those because I don't think selling, you know, migratory bird bird's nests is actually legal to do on eBay. And we didn't even know what kind of bird's nests they were. And yeah. people, it was kind of cool. That's why we like the internet. People told us what kind of birds they were. We uh, researched them. And that was true. It was those birds. And yeah. we, and eBay actually then sent us one of those uh, warnings. The like, policy warnings. Yeah, a violation. And Now, it, it's, what's weird about it is I had already sold the item and they removed it and gave me a policy you know, notice. So I didn't even think that was possible, but so there's no evidence of the, I think there's a reason why they take it off after it's sold. So nobody can see completed listings. Mm. It's so, it's always strange to me. So they don't want you to sell birds in that. I wonder why they even allowed you to list it in the like, first place. It's listed. Well, I think it's because there's no category for bird's nest. I put it under crafting mm. and I think it's just a, a, a keyword flag. Yeah. Or someone flagged it. And, you know, for anyone that's new, I mean, this is, I think when you're uh, selling anything and everything like uh, we do as scavengers, I mean, it happens every now and again. I had bought some uh, military yeah. uh, supplies, like a gas mask and some goggles, and we got some policy violations because sometimes you can't sell some of that stuff overseas. I mean, so yeah. it happens. eBay just tells you you can't do this, and they send you a link to a page that explains it. It's very often very convoluted. Yeah. It's just how it is. No big deal. No, I will say about the nest, I don't know if we were clear about this. The birds were done with the nest. It's not like we like kicked out baby birds or eggs. You know, they were completely <laughs> empty and And they were just on our porch, so we didn't want honestly, we didn't want birds back on our porch. We were basically clearing them off cuz they were being pests in our <laughs> Yeah. area, but but, you know, I can understand why, you know, there are rules they don't want people. Yeah. I can imagine if people knew they could sell a bird's nest for $40, they would be out in the, uh, in the forest, woods. like, pulling all the bird's nests they could <laughs> Which out. Which would be very them. bad. Yeah. So, so we do not encourage that at fair, all. Fair play. So like we said, we have not listed all of it this week because we were preparing to leave and now we're gone. Uh, we're traveling right now. But our store is on vacation, although people can still buy from us. And right. On our store, there's a big – there's the eBay is notice that eBay will put on that says, you know, this buyer is gone. You can still buy and they will ship on this day. We also, on our header, put that its message as well in big Yeah, writing. it's on the store page. Right. It's in. I honestly wish that eBay allowed me to put that on the individual listing page too, but I think they want to encourage people to buy. But I'm going to so. tell you, every time it's we leave and we try this experiment, I'm always like, Who's going to buy from us? And wait three weeks. Knowing we're going to be yeah. gone for three weeks. And you know what? We were in the airport yesterday. <laughs> the three weeks had started. And we sold probably more yesterday than we had the whole week. We had a $500 day yesterday. And like we always say, we send them an eBay message straight through eBay. And I email them. And I started when they paid me. I email them at that email address too because I'm paranoid. And no one had a problem. And either people just just don't write back so we yeah. just assume they don't care or we've even had people yesterday email us and they were like no problem just mail it when you get back have a good trip yeah which i love especially because the two big sales we had yesterday were these two different objects that we've been storing in our house because we just had them on the mantle and they both sold a it pair of bookends and these like two big like incense burners these like br brass like i think they're like three feet tall candle holders for like a church they're massive and we've had them i swear i've had them up for three years i both those items i looked at when we were cleaning our house and i was like are these ever gonna sell <laughs> and you know one reason is again is because we bought them the, the instant candle holders for five, five bucks which is amazing and the other ones probably for not it's much more than that yeah and 
They're really cool. They're hard to price, and we just threw a big number on them. It was like three hundred dollars each. Well, I had on those column candle holders. I originally had a ridiculous. I think I had five hundred dollars, <laughs> and, and I will say it's because I saw another exact similar pair sell for that much. So I was like, "Yeah, I'm gonna sell them for that much." Well, I didn't. I I um, brought the price down um, a couple weeks ago to two fifty, mm-hmm. and they sold for two fifty. They had two fifty make an offer, so yeah. I was thrilled. So I guess that's you know always something to throw in there when we're talking about this uh, about do is it worth it to hold items? I mean, so we yeah. paid five dollars for these candle holders. We hold we held them probably for about a year and a half. Yeah. And so and but then they sold for two fifty. Two fifty. So I mean to me that's worth waiting. So wait eighteen right. months to make that much profit versus I'm sure if we had put, you know, fifty dollars on it we could have sold it. It's within right. two or uh, three months. But to me that's more evidence that it's okay to hold on to things because we're listing so much other stuff something's gonna sell sometimes i get discouraged because i'm like i got, i want this thing out of my house but that 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 was awesome both those things sold yeah so i think for me the exciting thing is you know we didn't we probably put about 12 hours into ebay it's this week like a monday and tuesday we finish photographing all the stuff on our house. Yes, and, we had piles we were going through. And then after that, we were just focused on getting out of town and packing and getting ready for this other job. Right. But our numbers are basically the same as any other week when we have worked on eBay. And that's really yeah. where when eBay becomes when eBay became our full-time job for the most part, it was important that there was some level of stability. Right. And so front like we always say front loading the work contributes to that. So so this week we we've had several questions. There have been several people, I don't know if it's just a um something that's happening to several people where they're saying, you know, they're having a hard time finding items that they would be able to sell on eBay for good prices. And you know, I think what people are bringing up is we always stress buying things for a dollar or two. And I don't know. I mean, I'm wondering, is it because we live in a rural area and there's more of these like yard sales and flea markets where people are willing to unload stuff? And, you know, these people are in San Diego or L.A. or, you know, a big city. I don't know. I mean, so we're here in Austin. And number one, it's really nice to be in a a city. city. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we love living in the country, but it is nice being a place where... So a lot of people, you know, a lot of young people, a lot of places to eat, you know. Yeah, there's just, there's culture, there's more culture, there's there's more things to see and do and different kinds of foods to eat. <laughs> so, you know, I was thinking, okay, so what if we lived in a city like Austin? Right. And number one, I know there are people on the blog that are from Austin, so I'd love to hear it's what they say. Like, number one, I would hit Craigslist. Like, Craigslist, I, I yeah. would be having the a free... Uh, page on Craigslist where Open people, all the time. Yeah, where yeah. people are like, I'm giving away these things. I'm like, I'll be right there, you know? Yeah. I think also, like, um, something like, I don't know if this is frowned upon, but free cycle. People give yep. – and you know what is funny? When we lived in San Francisco, I would give stuff away on free cycle, and there were definitely sellers on there <laughs> because no matter what most random thing I would give away, a sewing machine, a bunch of blank CDs, the same person would be like, I want it. I'll come get it. I'm like, yep. what? Yep. <laughs> now I know. <laughs> yep. Yep. But, you know, there are places to get stuff where people are like just giving it away. I mean, and then the other thing is, you know, we're staying downtown Austin. And I know or I heard today that uh, the uh, at UT students, the campus is not far the from The university. Us. Yeah. yeah. That I think that they're uh, leaving school. I want to actually go by campus and just walk around and see if like people are dumping stuff. <laughs> seeing if they're throwing stuff away. There's a know? woman on YouTube called I think it's her name's Mom the eBayer. Someone yes, told us about someone it told us here. about it on the blog. She lives in Chicago. That is a major metropolitan area, and people are just throwing amazing stuff away in the garbage for free. It seems like the one video we saw, it must have been 
behind an apartment building. Yeah. So I guess people are moving out and they're throwing away. I remember she like picked up a MacBook. <laughs> I, a uh, MacBook. And an iPhone. Like even a broken MacBook and a broken iPhone will get you money. So, I, I mean, I think that that's why we call this show Scavengers because it really has to be a sense of – you're looking for things in the not the obvious places, you know. Right. If you're, you know, when we first started, we were kind of sticking to probably what everyone it's new does, you know. We're going to Goodwill, and right. very quickly you realize like that's the most obvious place to go. Well, and the prices, as we see, have been getting higher and higher. Right. So it is not profitable for us to shop there. So you know, again, if we lived in a city, our strategies would just be different from what we have now, and you know, it would be yeah, I would definitely be dumpster diving. I would a lot if more if we. If we still lived in San Francisco, New York, Boston, yep. oh, trash, uh, trash night would well, be big nights. When we go to New York, which we are going to in a couple of weeks, we actually look on the New York City schedule by where we're staying and see when trash night is because yep. they rotate it <laughs> per block and per street. Yeah. So you're just like, all right, it's and trash you, night. And if you pick a nice neighborhood and it's trash night every you night. You just take a nice night and I mean, sorry, if you just take a nice walk and. You, you go just through kind the of, trash. And you just kind of like, and very often we don't have to actually dig into bags. People are just yeah. lying stuff right there on the street. Yeah, because they want people to take it. Right, you know. In Boston, we would do that all the time. We put it out in a box right on our front stoop, right free on it, and it'd be gone the next day. Yeah. I mean, people just take it. That's what yeah. you want them to do. So and I don't know. I don't understand why people are having difficulty finding nice things at, uh, at yard sales. I mean, we've been to yard sales in uh, New York, in All Boston, over the country. L.A. I mean, you know, we've been to Denver and, I don't know, we've always found really nice things. And know. there are auctions yep. everywhere. Go to um, auctionzip.com. There, I mean... And that's one of the things we're going to do. Like, after we do this job, we have two weeks where we're going to travel around and... We're definitely going to hit some auctions yeah. like here in Texas just because it's also just fun. It's that fun. About. Yeah, it's fun. But also there there are also estate sales. Um, I think it's estatesales.net. I mean, there are estate sales everywhere. And and the other thing, too, is sometimes you have to be willing to, to travel a little bit outside of your area. You right. know, take a trip and stock up and then come home. And, you know, I've seen them, too, on YouTube. There's all these videos these haul of videos where people are showing you what they bought and I don't know I don't really get those it's videos but I think that they might maybe give the wrong impression of how it works I mean it is true we will sometimes go to five thrift stores yeah but only get a eight couple things good things right you know and you know sometimes we'll go into a thrift store and we'll walk out without anything which is rare but it does happen I mean, so, or a yard sale yeah so it's it's more about frequency you know it's about keeping you yeah. got to keep a looking for stuff you got to keep looking and uh you know part of the scavenger mentality too is like if you're at a yard sale or a flea market and you see a box that just looks like junk you got to dig into that box because yeah. you <laughs> countless countless times i'm like no one else dug into the box and i did and there was an amazing you know gem I at the remember bottom remember when we were walking in it's new york and i saw a trash bag <laughs> and i just saw the glint of a cd and i look in it and someone had thrown out all of their Mac OS installed disks, all these softwares, probably some company that was changing com computers and they threw all these software disks away, you know, and those are each worth, you know. Yeah, they're, they're worth money. And so, you know, there, there are some people out there who have an older, you know, iBook and they need that yeah, and, CD. It's not trash. And I think that's what we always talk about too is, you know, being, being willing to find its value everywhere. Yeah. So I guess it's just different strategies. I know there's some people out there that say you need to find a niche and be really right. a narrow and deep and stick to that. That doesn't work for it doesn't us. doesn't work for because us. If we were just trying to find one thing, I think it, it would take time to find enough of that one thing, you know. So we just like to look at things and trust our gut and do the uh, its research. And, there you and, go. and and also part of it is I would get really bored if I only looked for one thing. And this actually comes into talking about 
buying sourcing on eBay for either people made spelling mistakes yeah. or they're selling it on auction and it's selling for two dollars, whatever the reason is. Yeah, someone commented that they've been selling on eBay by by buying stuff on eBay. Right. So this guy sells, I think, uh, it's video games, and then he'll buy big uh, lots of uh, video right. games, then break it up and resell it. But he said he was, I think at best, he would double his uh, money. And that seems to be what we've seen. We've tried some experiments trying to buy stuff on eBay, but really, by the time you you buy it and you pay the fees and you pay it to have it shipped and then you resell it and then those fees i just feel like i I don't know maybe that was the thing in ebay a long time ago that people could make a lot of uh, money that way i just don't see it now at least not in quantity i mean maybe every month you could get you know you could really get something really nice for really cheap and flip it and make you know a hundred dollars but if you're trying to make two three four thousand dollars yeah a month I don't think you could be buying a hundred things on eBay and yeah. reselling that on eBay and part of the issue too is because I actually have tried to do this with certain um, clothing brands and with certain kinds of jewelry um, number one if they're selling it as an auction you have to wait and with an auction you're like Great, it's only at nine ninety nine. Well, okay, the last six hours it could very well get up to you know a lot more. So you've been waiting for that item, and with the buy it now, a lot of times it's just priced too high, you know, compared to uh, an estate sale or something. Or you're kind of taking a chance on it because a lot of times the stuff that's really cheap, the person thinks it's junk. So they've only taken like one photo of it <laughs> yes. and really not described it. And you're kind of just taking a, a chance on it. Like so. I've tried to buy some um, Bakelite necklaces where the person's like, it might be Bakelite. And I'm like, did you test it? And they're like, no. I'm like, okay, it could be Bakelite. And we've actually bought a couple things and it turned out not to be It was Bakelite. plastic. So you're and like, <laughs> so, <laughs> what do you know, I do now? They were cheap, five bucks. but Right. Uh, it's just, I guess, like we always say, there's the one thing that we don't have enough of and that's time. And so yeah. you just have to figure out where to spend your time. Exactly. So I think part of this for us is just getting out into the world, you know. Scavenging gives us a reason to get out there. Right. To get off our butts. To explore new parts of our town, new parts of our county. When we travel like to Austin, we're definitely going to get into different parts of the yeah. uh, a city here. Just because, you know, we want to see where we can scavenge here, you know? Yeah, I mean, I like your idea of going up to the... Um... Yeah. The university, I actually hadn't thought of that. And, um, yeah, you know, and, you know, and part of scavenging is like you get to go to new places to eat because you get hungry. And, right, and you're in you a different know. neighborhood. Like most of the touristy people in Austin are down on 6th Street and it's downtown. And the the university might be like a way cooler place yep. to hang out. So that's that's always fun. Cool. So, you know, we don't really have a lot of talk about uh, about how, we, how our week was this week just because... Just because uh, we were... Ramping yeah. up for the trip, so so uh, that's, that's that's how we're it. doing it. We are doing an interview with Steve from a Raken Profit, and those of you that watch all those at YouTube uh, videos about eBay uh, sellers, he's kind of one of those guys that is uh, always popping up talking about his eBay business, and you know we thought it'd be cool talking to someone kind of young who. Uh, is really like into selling clothes on eBay. Yeah, it's so yeah. Crazy. Well, I see the the reason I love talking to him too is like he just gets it. I mean, he he just like he's super dedicated <laughs> to his, you know, business and he he really loves talking about it on YouTube. So, <laughs> yeah. we can definitely relate to that. You I know? really love his like East Coast accent too. He's yeah, he super... does. Yeah. Yep. So, he's up on in Connecticut. So So anyway, that interview will be coming up next. So check it out. See ya. Bye.